Megalithic monuments dating back 5,000 years or more are not in short supply. There are thousands of them, but of course there are some that stand out more than others. Take, for example, the Karnak alignments, also known as the Karnak stones in France. This complex, for want of a better word, has more than 3,000 standing stones, and no one knows what their function was or why this site is so different from all the others. Let's take a look. Experts tend to separate the megalith building regions of Europe into several traditions based on their style and location. The Karnak alignments are in Brittany, France, and as such sit on the Atlantic coast. They belong to a megalithic tradition that stretched along the west coasts of Iberia and France into the United Kingdom and Ireland. In the megalithic world, structures varied from stone circles and dolmens to portal tombs and singular menhirs. Various kinds of megalithic monument were erected, many of which are still standing today. Some, such as portal tombs and dolmens, had a funerary function that is fairly obvious to us because of skeletal remains and grave goods that have been excavated from them. Others are less well understood. The Karnak alignments, just as the name suggests, are mostly made up of stone rows, very long stone rows. However, there are other related structures such as dolmens and tumuli close by and in the surrounding area. Just as with most megalithic sites, local legends have emerged over the years that have tried to explain their existence. In one, Pope Cornelius is supposed to have turned pagan soldiers into stone, thereby explaining the large volume of men here at the site. Another says that the wizard Merlin of King Arthur fame turned a Roman legion into stone there. Putting the fanciful nature of these stories to the side, they are chronologically wrong anyway. The Karnak alignments are thought to date back to 3300 BCE and possibly even earlier. The Karnak alignments have been divided by researchers into four groups. The Menak alignments are made up of 11 rows of 1,050 standing stones stretching for more than a kilometer with heights varying between about half a meter and four meters. They have a southwest to northeast alignment with monuments referred to as cromleks on each end. A cromlech is a sort of rough stone circle. The Kermario alignments are made up of 10 rows of 1,029 menhirs, also stretching for more than a kilometre. These are to the east of the Menek set and are also oriented southwest to northeast. There is also a stone circle on the east end of the rows. Even further to the east lies the Kerlescan alignments, which are made up of 13 rows of 555 standing stones, stretching for less than a kilometre and running from northwest to southeast. There is also a stone circle type structure at the west end of those rows. The Petit Menek alignments are a smaller group, even further to the east, which are now covered in vegetation in a wood. They consist of eight rows made up of several hundred men here and were probably an extension of the Kerlescan alignments originally. Passage tombs covered with earth and mounds such as the San Michel and Moustoir tumuli are also found in the same area. The San Michel tumulus is 125 by 50 meters and 10 meters in height. Many grave goods have been excavated from it, including axes, flint tools, a stone called silimonite, and 15 stone chests. Then there are also several dolmens in the area, which would have been covered with earth and mounds originally. Although they are thought to have been funerary monuments, just as dolmens are thought to have been in general, no skeletal remains have been excavated from them. This is probably because of the acidic soil of the region. The Kirkado dolmen is particularly interesting. Axes, arrowheads, pottery sheds and beads made of nephrite were found within it, along with wall art, which is not very common in megalithic monuments. These wall carvings include a double axe symbol and serpentine figures. There is also a rectangular area lined with standing stones known as the Manio Quadrilateral, which was probably a sort of tumulus originally, and a huge singular men here, more than 6.5 metres tall, called the Manio Giant. Both of these monuments are close to the Kermario alignments. All the stones at Karnak were extracted from local granite, so 
not transported over great distances, but that doesn't make the complex any less impressive. It must have been quite an undertaking that served a very important function to the Neolithic inhabitants of Brittany. Much of the original surveying of megalithic sites in the area was done by Robert Milne in the late 19th century. He then took Zachary Larusic under his wing, who did a lot of surveying, photography and reconstruction related to the Karnak alignments. In the 1970s, Professor Alexander Tom, who's these days well known for his megalithic yard, a unit of measurement he believed was used in the Neolithic to build monuments, although it's highly debated, wrote several papers on the astronomical significance of the Karnak alignments. He found evidence for foresights and backsites amongst the stone rows for viewing both solar and lunar phenomena. However, Tom saw these as part of a grander observatory connected to the broken menhir of Egra also called Le Grand Menhir Brise, around 10 kilometers to the southeast. The menhir is very ancient, having been erected around 4,700 BCE. It was one of a row of 19 menhirs and would have stood 20 meters tall before it collapsed. It's thought to have fallen and broken into four pieces during the Neolithic, probably around 4,000 BCE. There is evidence to support the fall having been caused by an earthquake. Strangely, a pit was found close to where it would have stood, which contained cattle dating to the late 6th and early 5th millennium BCE. If the Karnak alignments were a complicated solar and lunar observatory, then could it be that other stone rows and megalithic monuments on the Atlantic route had a similar function? And if they did, why was this complex so extensive in contrast to the others? Also, why are there funerary monuments mixed in with an astronomical observatory? Was there ritual significance in observing the cosmos? Perhaps there was, and it was linked with life after death. Such a concept became common in later cultures like ancient Egypt, after all. Brittany is full of megalithic monuments. Another famous set are the Loch Maria Kay megaliths, which include the broken men here of Egra I just mentioned. Another monument included in this set is the Table des Monchats, a dolmen containing intriguing carvings of an axe and a plow. Its capstone was originally part of the broken men here of Egra. This is how it looked when it was first discovered and recorded. Since then, a cairn has been built over the top for its preservation. The Air Gra Tumulus is a 140 meter long cairn erected sometime between the 5th millennium and 3300 BCE. Once again, it's thought to incorporate part of the broken men here of Air Gra. So that's pretty interesting. It shows just how ancient the Air Gra men here is. One of the most important sources of megalithic art is also in Brittany, and it's on the island called Gavrinis. This island was joined to the Brittany mainland during the Neolithic and is home to the Gavrinus Passage Tomb, which dates to 3500 BCE, so for context was contemporary with the Maltese temples. It contains a ceiling slab with a carved bull and other decorations, which appear to be part of a scene which continues at the Table des Morchards and the Air Vingal Tomb. Experts think the slabs in all three tombs which show the scene were once part of one large menhir before it was broken up and reused. The chamber in the centre of the cairn is reached by a corridor lined with highly decorated megaliths including geometric motifs such as zigzags and curvy lines as well as staffs and horns. Some of the slabs facing the cairn stones, which is over the tomb, are covered in decorations even though these would not have been visible originally. It's thought these were brought from elsewhere and reused. So in Brittany, we see several different megalith building phases starting in the early 5th millennium, meaning the area was inhabited for thousands of years and held such importance that enormous projects such as the Karnak alignments, Le Grand Menhir Brise and the Gavrinis Passage Tomb were undertaken there. So how relevant were the Karnak alignments to the megalith building tradition in general? A paper published in 2019 took a fresh look at the known radiocarbon dates of a large number of megaliths to suggest how the trend for building these huge stone monuments may have spread throughout Europe. The author hypothesized that a connection existed between the megalith building communities rather than an independent evolution of this construction style having occurred in different places. 2,410 radiocarbon dates were taken into account for the study. 
Based on their analysis, the author concluded that megalithic monuments originated in northwestern France before spreading north and south along the Atlantic facade and then throughout the Mediterranean via a marine route. So this would make the builders of the Karnak alignments the originators of this trend. Whilst I support the idea that megalith building communities in different regions had some sort of connection, and whilst I think a marine diffusionist model makes sense, there's still quite a few things in this paper that need to be addressed. I'll take a deep look into it at some point and see how experts have responded to the paper. But just off the top of my head, how do we explain Gobekli Tepe and the sites in Turkey? Why aren't the Maltese temples taken into account? From the Maltese islands, only the Shara stone circle hypogeum burials, which date to a relatively late period in the megalith building chronology of the islands, are featured, and that's because they can be firmly dated. The paper is, after all, centered on radiocarbon dating. But what about the many monuments which don't have datable finds associated with them, or where the finds have been dated by other methods? There's no question that the Atlantic facade features some incredibly ancient megalithic monuments, but I don't think the tradition originated there exactly. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. I got another patron this week, so thank you. If anyone else wants to join my Patreon community, the link is in the description below. Come and find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I post there pretty often with lots of extra content. I've also got a website with some further information on the sites I visit myself, megalithhunter.com.